Welcome to the third video in the Secrets to Drawing video course. In this video, we're going to talk about the next element of art, form. Before we begin, let's define what form means. In terms of art, form is a three-dimensional object. We exist in a world full of forms. It's important for us to understand that when we are creating drawings, we are creating an illusion. In fact, we are creating the illusion of form. So how can we create this illusion of form on a two-dimensional surface? Well, the key to creating the illusion of form is actually twofold. There are two things we need to keep in mind. The first, we must understand that forms have more than one side. Unlike shape, forms have length, width, and height, and we need to include that in our drawings. Secondly, we need to understand that forms are affected by light and produce distinctive areas where this illusion of light manifests. Now let's take a look at a few shapes and how we can turn those shapes into the illusion of a form on a two-dimensional surface. We'll begin with one of the most basic geometric shapes, a square. Now when we begin with a square, we only have two dimensions. In order to add the illusion of three dimensions, we'll add a few more lines. We'll add three lines from each of three of the corners of the square, and then we'll connect those lines to create the illusion of a cube. Once these lines are added, we have addressed the first thing that we need to do to create the illusion of form on a two-dimensional surface. But there's more we need to do to create this illusion further. We need to address how light is going to manifest as an illusion in our drawing. We do this by adding shadowing. In the case of the cube, we have one side that's dark. We have another side that's kind of middle of the road dark. And in the case of this illustration, we have one side that's completely light. We also have shadow that comes from the back of the cube on the opposite side of the light source. Now these shadows and areas have names. The first, the darkest area on this cube is called the core shadow. Core shadow is shadow that exists on the object. Next, the shadow that results from the opposite side of the light source that's cast upon another object is called a cast shadow. Then we have basically the local color. In this case, we call it the midtone the middle of the road value we used for shadowing. And then on top of this cube, we have what's called the highlight. This is the area of most intense light. These areas work together to create the illusion of form on a two-dimensional surface. In this case, we've taken a square, a two-dimensional shape, and turned it into a cube. Now, let's take a look at another shape and turn it into a form or actually the illusion of form. This time we'll take a look at a triangle and we'll turn it into a pyramid. We'll begin this drawing by just drawing a flat triangle. Now we need to add the extra side. We do this by adding a couple more lines. Now we can address how light manifests on the form. Again, we'll have a core shadow, a mid-tone, and a cast shadow. In the case of the pyramid, this side has the core shadow, the darkest area on the form that creates a shadow. Secondly, the shadow that's cast upon another object, again, is the cast shadow. In the case of the pyramid, we have a mid-tone. The highlighted side is not seen by the viewer, but it's important for you to understand that that side of the pyramid would receive the highlight, or the strongest area of intense light. So 
So here again, we've taken a triangle and now we've turned it into the illusion of a pyramid. Let's take another shape and turn it into a form. This time a circle and we'll turn it into a sphere. Now I know that sometimes people struggle with drawing circles, but here's a little trick that I've picked up. If you draw with your shoulder and keep your wrist straight, you're going to have better success with a circle. In fact, I start to move my pencil around in a circular motion, then slowly bring it down to the surface of the paper. And I make several circles. You always have a better chance of winning the lottery if you buy several tickets, so why not make several marks on your surface? With a little practice, you'll get great at drawing circles. Now that we've got our circle drawn, let's start to add some of that shadowing to create the illusion of form. In the previous video, we talked about cross contour lines. So as I'm adding shadowing to the surface of the sphere, I'm thinking about my cross contour lines. Now in the case of a sphere, unlike the cube and the pyramid, there should be a gradation of shadowing that happens. Because the sphere is rounded, there will be a smooth transition from dark shadow to the highlight. So here we see the core shadow on the sphere. We also have a cast shadow underneath. Notice that the cast shadow is circular, or actually more like an oval shape, to reflect the form of the sphere. We also have a midtone and a highlight as well. So here again, we've taken a circle and created the illusion of a sphere. Now a cube, a pyramid, and a sphere are all geometric forms. You'll remember in the last video when we talked about shape, we talked about geometric and organic shapes. The problem is a lot of the forms that we're trying to create are not just geometric forms. They're organic forms. So here let's take an organic shape and turn it into an organic form. Remember, we're trying to create the illusion of light here. So we need to have shadow. We need to have a core shadow. We need to have a midtone and a highlight on the object. And we also have to have a cast shadow that comes from it. So when I'm adding shadow to this organic shape, I'm thinking about where my light source is originating from. I'm putting the shadow on the opposite side from that light source on the object. I'm also putting the cast shadow on the surface, away from the organic form, on the opposite side of the light source. Here we can see our cast shadow. We also have core shadow. We have a less prevalent midtone, but it's still there. And in the case of this demonstration, we have a large area of highlight. So let's take a look at another example. I'm sure you're all familiar with the drawing mannequins that you can pick up at your art store. Well, a drawing mannequin is basically the human form broken down into individual segments of form. Drawing mannequins are actually great for practicing drawing forms and creating that illusion on a two-dimensional surface. Here you can see I'm beginning my drawing by drawing the individual shapes that I see on the mannequin. Remember, I'm really observing my subject matter. In fact, I'm looking at my subject matter half the time, taking that information and putting it on my paper. Don't forget that drawing is at least 50% observation. At this time, I'm gathering information about the shapes. Then I'll take these shapes and create the illusion of form by adding shadowing in a consistent manner with the light source. So now that I've got the shapes drawn, I can begin to add the shadowing. 
Now I'm still looking at my object as I'm adding these shadows. I need to understand which side of the forms have the darkest values or have the core shadows. I need to understand where the midtones exist. And if there's any cast shadows on any other parts of the mannequin, I need to understand where those are. Remember, all that information is on the subject matter that you're drawing. All you have to do is look for it, find it, and put that information on your paper. I'm also not neglecting the fact that line is important in this drawing and that I need to enhance the line quality. Most of the forms that make up this mannequin are somewhat cylindrical. This means that they're a little bit rounded. Because of this, most of the shadowing that I add is going to be similar to the shadowing that we put on the sphere. It's going to start dark and slowly gradate to a lighter value. When you are drawing the illusion of form on a two-dimensional surface, don't forget to make sure that your light source stays consistent. You can ensure this by making sure that all the dark areas on your forms or your core shadows are on the same side of all the forms within that drawing. In the same manner, make sure that your highlights are consistent as well. Now what did we learn in this video? Well first we learned in terms of art, form is a three-dimensional object. Secondly, we learned when we are drawing, we are creating an illusion and we need to create the illusion of form. In order to do this, we learned that forms have more than one side. We need to include that in our drawings. We also learned that forms are affected by light and produce distinctive areas where the illusion of light manifests. In the next video, we're going to take a look at this a little bit deeper and explore value and the importance of a light source in a drawing.